All right. Good morning. Good morning. As I was preparing for service today, last night after midnight, I was on one of my Bible programs and I brought up the devotion for the day. And the devotion for today, which is a random deal, was Hebrews 10 and 25. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another and so much the more as you see the day approaching. And I thought, well, I don't know if they changed that, but this thing is preset. The set of devotions, daily devotions, is preset years in advance. Has been for a long time. It just happened to be the right scripture um, to give us encouragement. Uh, this is the first time we're recording our services to be put out. So uh, it's different. Um, a pastor likes to see his people. Uh, to be doing something, recording, and to be sent out to not being sure who's listening or what we're doing. That's it's very different. So bear with me, please. This morning I want to begin with Matthew, the 19th chapter, and we're going to begin reading in the 28th verse. And the Word of God says, And Jesus said unto them, Verily I say unto you, that ye which have followed me in the regeneration. When the Son of Man shall sit in the throne of his glory, ye also shall sit upon twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. And every one that hath forsaken house, or brethren, or sister, or father, or mother, or wife, or children, or land, for my name's sake, shall receive a hundred and some shall inherit everlasting life. Hundredfold, and shall inherit everlasting life. But many that are first shall be last, and the last shall be first. Now, regeneration is a different word. And not many people really always understand regeneration. In the natural, regeneration is when a salamander loses its tail, it grows a new one. That's regeneration. We don't have that in our bodies naturally. Um, the word regeneration only occurs twice in the Bible. This is one place, and again, it's also in Titus. But the actual word regeneration means born again. When God comes into us, when we receive him, we have changed and been reborn, regenerated, so to speak. What we once were, what we once lacked, is not there any longer. We have gained something new, something that was not there before. We are regenerated. We have received something from God that we were missing. Like a salamander, when it loses its tail, you know, it's been removed. Well, we've been removed from the presence of God. That fellowship that we were intended when he created Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, he intended us to have fellowship. He intended us to have a relationship. He intended us to have a life with him. That's what we were created for. But through sin and separation and rebellion, we don't have what we were created to be. But when we become born again, we're regenerated. And we receive the things that we are missing. And that's an incredible thought. That he's going to bring us back the things that have been taken away. The things that are missing. And some of those things we've been missing since before we were born. We were born in sin. Born separated. Born failed. 
more flawed, but yet God in his infinite greatness is choosing to restore us to some things that we've never had, that we were supposed to have. What an incredible God we serve. Now, if you've had something and lost it, then you miss it. I remember for, for so long, Dad would miss his leg after they cut it off. But when we talk about spiritual regeneration, we're missing things that we never knew we had. God's restoring things that we never knew existed because we didn't walk in that faith. We didn't walk in that realm. We didn't walk with that leg, so to speak. So it's, how do you know you're missing something if you've never had it? If you've never had a relationship with Jesus Christ, how do you know what you're missing? <coughs> it's like someone, okay, describe God to me. Well, he does this. No, no, don't, don't tell me what God does. What is God? Not what does God do, but what is God? Words fail me. And that's what so many people will look at religion and say, well, you can't tell me, you can't show me, you can't example, I can't see God, I can't touch God, I can't feel God. So how do I know who is God or what is God? And those that are believers think, oh yeah, he's my father, he's my friend, he's my comforter, he's my companion. Well, how do you know? Because I've experienced it. Why can't they understand that? Because they're like they're walking on a leg that they've never had. They're trying to do something that they've never known what it was like to do. When someone is born without sight, they don't miss sight. When someone is born without hearing, they don't miss hearing. So there's no desire to see because they've never saw. There's no desire to hear because they've never heard. But your soul, God is regenerating what was supposed to be there in the beginning. Lord, help us. And everyone that, verse 29 again, and everyone that had forsaken houses or brother or sister or father or mother or wife or children or land for my name's sake shall receive a hundredfold and shall inherit everlasting life. But many that are first shall be last and the last shall be first. We have an opportunity to receive something that we don't even know we needed. But when you make people that have been followers of the Lord all of their lives, and they have this peace about them. I love the company of old saints because things don't rattle them. Economy doesn't rattle them. Why? Because they've walked in a newness of life. They've walked in a peace. They've walked in a joy. They've walked in a, in, a, in a realm that is beyond this world. And they know that it's closer to them to be there than the days they have here. Because they've been what? They've been regenerated into a person, into a thing, into something that didn't exist before, but was always supposed to have existed if we had just not sinned in the beginning. God is calling us to be what he created us to be, what he intended us to be. Lord, help us. Not what we've always known ourselves to be. Let us turn to Titus 3 and 5.
not by the works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost, which he shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior. That being justified by his grace, we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. This is a faithful saying, and these things I will that thou affirm constantly, that they which have believed in God might be careful to maintain good works. These things are good and profitable unto men. But avoid foolish questions and genealogies and contentions and striving about the law, for they are unprofitable and vain. A man that is a heretic after the first and section, second admonition reject, knowing that he that is such a subverted and sinning being condemned of himself. He has called us to be regenerated and walk in a righteousness that is not ours. We don't understand righteousness because we're not righteous. Our righteousness, according to the word of God, is filled with rags. But when God declares us righteous, he applies our righteousness, or his righteousness, upon us. Because he is righteous. Not only is he righteous, he's the definition of righteousness. He lives without sin. He gave them the opportunity. He is without sin, cast the first stone. Not one. He's talking about himself. There was only one without sin. Sin. It's Christ Himself. And He says, I'll put my righteousness upon you when you receive me. And then, how do I function in that? I don't know what it's like to be without sin. I don't know what it's like to function that way. I don't know how to walk that walk without Christ. But when he puts that upon me, I'm walking anew. I'm walking in a, in, in a realm of world, a spiritual realm, that I never existed in before. There's no road map. There's no Google Maps to get me where I need to go spiritually. I usually find Google Maps and really get me lost. Sometimes I just get to a place and it says you can't get there from here. And when I try to find the Bible and I try to make it on my own, that's exactly where I'm going to end up. You can't get there from here. Why? Because I don't know how to walk in righteousness. Because it's not my righteousness. It's Christ. I must be regenerated and apply the things that God intended me to have so that I can walk in the righteousness that he's given me. I must have tools and abilities and strengths that I never had before. I must grow new things. It's amazing how settlements, different animals actually will regrow their own organs. How does that work? In the natural, we don't understand that. In the spiritual, we do. Because when we become saved, our stony heart is made new again. When we become forgiven, all of a sudden we grow what? We grow compassion. Too many times people in the world have no compassion because they don't feel like they've ever been receiving compassion. But when they receive the compassion and the forgiveness of Christ, then all of a sudden they find compassion in their own heart. What happened? I re was regenerated. My heart regenerated itself. I have a new organ. Not the pumping organ in my chest, but the spiritual organ of heart. That is the part of love and compassion that we did, didn't have before. It's been regenerated. I've grown something to replace what was lost. How did I lose it? It was taken from me with sin. It was taken from me with rebellion. It was taken from me by the world. 
and I've functioned for many years without it. But yet when Christ enters, we're regenerated. And something new has grown where something ugly and hateful once was. The Lord help us to find strength in what God is doing in us. Help us to find strength in what God can do in us. And to walk in a path of opportunity and an optimism of what God's going to do next. How do I know what he's going to do next? I don't. Because I don't know what I'm missing. I don't know where I'm lacking. You know, people will say, well, I want to make a list of my faults and then I'm going to work diligently to prepare them all. Well, how do I know what my faults are if I've never been without them? How do I know what I could be because I've never walked in that walk? I need the regeneration that only comes from God to grow me a heart that's big enough to love all the people that God will put in my realm of influence. God's going to have to grow me the ability to love more. You know, there's so many people that their, their circle is so small. The people they care about, the people they talk to, the people they love is just so small. And then I was visiting with a man not very long ago and he was talking about that his circle, his world is getting smaller. Because it's, it wasn't long ago his sister had passed away and two of his best friends had passed away. And his circle, his, his world of all those that he has always known is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. And he's feeling very much alone. I said, well, you're just going to have to open your world up. Well, I don't know how to do that. Why? Because you never have. This is what I've always done. This is what I'll always do. Spiritually, that's death. We must be open to see what God has for us. What's next? As I was visiting with a friend after she, her husband passed away, I told her, I said, have you started praying? She says, of course I'm praying. I said, no, have you started praying? What is my next adventure with you, Lord? What is the next great thing that we're going to do together? And she questioned for a minute, and then you seen her eyes light up. She says, no, I haven't prayed that, but I will. Because that's what happens when a door closes. And we think, this is what I've always been. This is what I've always done. I said, Lord, now's the next adventure. What is it? What's next? Where are we going together? Where are you leading us? Where are you guiding us? What are you creating in me that I can do that I've never done before? And we can look at the future with excitement. Lord, what is next? You know, I was dreading recording services. But then at the same time, I thought, maybe we'll reach people that we've never been able to reach before. Maybe we'll be able to help lives that we've never been able to help before. People that would never come into a church building. You know, and we've worked so wonderfully and struggled so hard to provide a beautiful place to come and worship God. But the church is not, every, the building is not the church. We are the church. And when we start praying, God, regenerate in me. Regenerate in me what I need for the next adventure. For our next calling. For our next movement. Whatever it may be. I'm ready. I'm ready to go forward. Do I know what I need? No. But I know a God that does. Do I know where we're headed? No. But I know a God that does. I don't have to know every aspect of God to know that I feel Him. To 
know that I've been regenerated because I know who I once was and I know who I am now. And I know the only way I got here was by the grace of God. I know how many times in my life that I should have been dead. I know that God carried me through when I was shot. I know God carried me through through two bouts of hantavirus. I know God carried me through by had pneumonia many times. And God has always carried me through. Why? Because he's not done. Because there's still another adventure for me and the Lord. What's next? Don't know. But whatever I need, I'll have. Because my Heavenly Father will create in me a new heart. He'll create in me the ability to do. He will regenerate me into what I need to be for the next adventure he has for me. When we look at the at Job and all that he went through, all that he lost, and there, the most pitiful man, he was one of the, he was the wealthiest man in the beginning, lost everything. And sitting in sackcloth and ashes, scraping the boils on his body with a broken piece of pot. And his good friends traveled to talk to him and said, curse God and die. He says, no way. His wife told him to curse God and die. And he said, you speak like a foolish child. Now we know that he was restored. We've read the account. The hard part is, new children don't replace old children that have died. We may have joy again. We have laughter again. But we are created in such a way that we remember all of our sorrows. But you know what? Forgetting your sorrows is not helpful. Pretending that you are not a sinner saved by grace is not helpful. Pretending that you are without shame, without fear, without, is not helpful. Being honest and open and saying, I don't know, but I know a God that does. Being honest with the world, I'm not perfect. I never was perfect, but I am regenerated into a new creature. I am righteous, not because of my righteousness, because of Christ's righteousness. I am changed, I am transformed. I have the ability of things that I have never had the ability to do before. All because in me, things have been regenerated. In me, things have been transformed. In me, I have been created to do more. And in doing that, God has called me to a higher calling. God expects me to do more. And I said, yes, Lord, I will. Where you go, I will follow. It's more than just a song. It needs to be a way of life. Where you go, I will follow. Where are you going? I'm not real sure. What do I need when I get there? I know that you will create it in me. Will I have understanding? By the time I get there, I will. Because my God has given me the strength and the comfort and the ability. I noticed something last night. In the midst of all of this craziness, and I cannot explain it, I'm sleeping better. Well, that doesn't make sense because I know a lot of people are not sleeping at all hardly because they're worried. But I'm looking at what God has for us next. What's available? What's about to happen? Don't know. But I know my God does. I know my Lord and Savior has all knowledge and all ability in his hand. And I am the regenerated me. Regenerated for his work, for his love, for his compassion. 
to be a vessel of honor in a lost and dying world. Allow me to be used by God is my prayer. Let us all pray. Dear Heavenly Father, give us strength and comfort to knowing even in the midst of harshness and calamities and confusion that we are regenerated in your love, in your peace, in your understanding, that we realize that it is all in your hands and that you give us strength and you give us peace and you will lead us and guide us to all truth. In the name of Jesus Christ, my Lord and my Savior, I pray. Amen and amen. Shake hands and be friendly. You're dismissed.